Last year, nearly 70,000 people reported being victims of romance scams with collective losses totaling over, get this, $1.3 billion. That's just in 2022 alone. Now, I've had dozens of guests on this stage who have shared very similar stories. They've fallen in love with someone they met online, and shocker, they've never met in person. When did that even become a thing? These people have sent anywhere from a few thousand to $1.3 million to somebody they fell in love with, got engaged with or whatever, but never met in person. Some have sold their vehicles or homes in the name of love. Now, yesterday we met Terry, who's been sending money to her boyfriend, Ricardo, who claims he's stuck in Canada waiting to receive the money from their Bitcoin investment. How do you get stuck in Canada? <laughs> now, Terry thought she had only sent Ricardo around $20,000. Well, we did the math and she was a little off. She sent nearly four times that amount, but she says it's okay because their Bitcoin investment should now be worth about $800,000 and should be receiving her money any day now. Here's what happened yesterday. For the last two years, my sister Terry has been involved with a man by the name of Ricardo. They met on Facebook Messenger. He wanted someone to spoil, and I said, you can spoil me. He's very handsome. Ricardo calls me his wife. Sometimes I cannot figure out what he's saying, but he doesn't sound an African. Ricardo claims that he's a U.S. citizen, that he has a home in Malibu, but he claims that he is in Canada. How do you get stuck in Canada? He went there for a job and... Well, I go to Canada all the time. I've never been stuck. I mean, you can... It's like going to Cleveland or something. Ricardo does tell my sister he wants to marry her. He wants to share his millions with her, and Terry believes it. Terry has never met Ricardo. They've been dating for two years. About a month after Ricardo and I met, he started asking me for money. Terry, you think you sent him around ten, twenty thousand dollars So you've actually sent him a total of $79,561. What do you think about that? Sick. I'm sick. The only thing worse than being in a fraudulent, non-existent relationship for a year is being in it for a year and one day. He's supposedly this really wealthy guy but he's asking her for money. Does that make common sense? No. Sometimes this whole thing doesn't make common sense to me. Do any of you think a decent man would allow a woman to do that? You're gonna make me cry. Well, I would rather you cry than keep sending that son of a bitch money. Terry says Daryl claims he's the only one with keys to Ricardo's condo, but we found someone else who also has a key. Uh, here's what she had to say. Hi, my name is Jasmine Wilcoxon. I am the real estate agent here at 1211 Caroline Street. I am helping the sellers right now sell this property. The home has been on the market for 11 days. What I do know is that Daryl or Ricardo are not the owners of this property, nor have they ever been, and they have not accepted any offers under that name. She's standing in the unit that's supposedly your condo. That's the address, that's the unit number, and it's owned by somebody, not Ricardo, not the CEO, and she's saying it's on the market not being sold by either of them, not being bought by either of them. And that's the unit. That's the address, the unit that supposedly is your next place to live. Terry does not hang out with any friends. She does not have any money to do anything because she gives it all away. And she sits at home and waits for the call from Ricardo. She's very lonely. I'm alone a lot. All of my family and friends believe that Ricardo is a scammer and not real. It hurts my feelings a lot. My sister tells me all she wants is me to be happy. Well, what if, in order for me to be happy, it's to be with him? There he is. That's your guy, right? 
Mm -hmm. That's your guy. But his name is not Ricardo Clay. His name is James. His name is what? James. He confirmed to us that he is the man in the photos. The photos that Ricardo is sending Terry. But he is not the man that Terry has been talking to or sending money to for the past two years. He was gracious enough to send us a video message. Hey, Dr. Phil, my name is James and uh, I'm an artist living in California, I'm not in Canada. And um, I know that my images are often used for romance scams and are taken mostly from my social media. I've never spoken to Terry. Uh, I don't know Terry. I'm really sorry that, that this is happening to her. I've been dealing with this for over 10 years now. Um, people taking my images and creating fake profiles and accounts just to scam people. I hope that this video can show um, that I am the person in the photos, but I am not the person that uh, Terry's been talking to and sending money to. Um, I hope that this video can help. Now, that's James. And yeah, I'm heartbroken, but I'm done. I did this scams for about five years. I just try to find these women on different sites like Tinder, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and so on and so forth. I work on countless of women, more than 50. I drafted my own manner. When you meet a woman for the first time, you you have to ask some questions. Hi, how are you? How are you doing? You need to have a great sense of humor, you know. You need to be funny. You tell her she's beautiful. You send her some pictures. I give a lot of attention to, to anyone I'm talking to. If I want to scam a woman, I look for those that are big, fat, big women. Most of them are single, you know, they're not married. They believe no one loves them. So when I start talking to them, I will show them that I care for them. I really want to come home to you. I love you, stuff like that. So it's, it's an easy target. I used to tell them that I'm outside the country, you know, I'm back home in the next one year. I did the people's pictures. I used to. I just go on his Instagram page. I take down his pictures and I use it to set up a fake profile. In the first two weeks, I started talking to them. I would tell them I love them. It takes me four days for me to ask someone I'm talking to for money. The most money I made was uh, in 2021, and that was over $30,000. Very, very good money. Very good. I felt guilty at some point when I was coming. See, there's a science to it. And we see it in this manual, this 40 pages, and it starts out uh, research. And he starts out by saying, I have a list of my clients here, and I, I, keep, a, I keep their name, and then I have all of these facts beside their name. Are they interested in dogs? Are they interested in gardening? Their children's names, their nicknames, because they're working 40 or 50 files at a time. And so they don't want to get confused uh, with all of that. Years ago, we met Ralph. Now, he met a woman named Louise on an online dating site, and despite never meeting her or even speaking to her, I get this. He didn't meet her. He didn't even speak to her. They just fell in love texting. Uh, and he believed they were in love. Now, Ralph sent Louise $154,300 to get her back home from Berlin, Germany. I think a ticket's about three grand, but he sent her a little more than that, where she claimed she was stuck while supervising a new construction for a government shopping mall. But even that amount, well, it just wasn't enough. I've been in a relationship with Louise for about 10 months. We met on a dating site. She had all the traits that I was looking for in a girlfriend. Louise is supervisor for a construction company that's building a shopping mall for the German government. She is real and our love is true. You've never actually met her in person. It's all been either text or emails. Why haven't you talked to her on the phone? I've tried, it runs to voicemail. She's never even left you a message? No. So she could sound like me for all you know. 
He's been drained of most of his retirement money. Ralph has given this woman $130,000 to $160,000. What are the excuses for not showing up? She actually got to the airport and they stopped her. That's what she said, yes. Right. She said, you've overstayed your business visa. Well, wouldn't they then want her to leave? This was an intimate picture that was shared with you. It was a nude photo, right? Yes. This is this woman's face photoshopped onto a nude body and sent to you. You could stick my face on there. <laughs> <laughs> the woman in the pictures, she is also a victim in all this. Her photos were stolen from her social media without her knowledge. So, Ralph, let me ask you straight up. Do you or do you not believe that you are being scammed? I'm convinced that I've been scammed, yes. Do you have any doubt whatsoever? No, I don't have any doubt. Well, we checked in with Ralph, and he says he's proud to say he hasn't sent another penny to Louise or any other scammer since we last spoke. <laughs> Ralph, I'm happy to hear that you've made those changes and are living your life in the real world now. We wish you and your family nothing but the best. Look, we're out of time for today, but I want to thank all of my guests and special thanks to Chris at Social Catfish. As we learn today, it's really important to check all the facts when communicating with someone online, especially if you're asked to send money. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.